the word of God. Pay attention, please. When you want to engage the word of God for victory, your first assignment is to find scriptures. Find scriptures that apply to your areas of concern. Find scriptures that apply to your area of concern. Apostle, it looks like all doors are closed. It looks like nothing is working in my life. Every door I try to open is closed. So you journey with the Spirit. Go and find from Scripture where were closed doors open in the Bible. Are you seeing now? The formula behind the story of that closed door. I taught you that the Bible does not profit you until you find the mystery behind the stories. Mysteries are hidden in stories. If you just read the story, and Abraham did this, and Samson did this, and Paul did this, it has not blessed you. You have to look with the eyes of the Spirit. Then you will find the mystery behind the story. That's the profit from it. So if I were you, and I'm, I want to do something about closed doors in my life, I go to scripture. At least one or two scriptures. Is that true? There are many, many scriptures that show you how closed doors were open. The most classic of them, I can use two doors. Number one was the door of the grave. Whether for Lazarus or for Jesus himself, it was once closed. The door of the grave for Lazarus, the tomb, was closed. But under a condition, it was open and it came out. So I will study it. Jesus himself the door, the tomb was closed and it was opened and it came out. Are we together? Yeah. I go to Acts chapter 12 and I read there how that Peter, for Peter it was even three gates that closed him and all of them opened. So I now begin, now I found a scripture. So open doors is a possibility so i will no longer be asking god do you want to open doors that question has already gone because i found it in scripture are we together and jesus the same yesterday the moment you find it in scripture there's no need asking whether god wants to do it for this promise is for you and your children and your children's children as many as are afar off are we together now so I know that God wants to open doors. Now the next thing is to understand the dynamics. What was done? You don't, you are not reading for open doors. Then suddenly you say, let me pause a bit and read Songs of Solomon. Mm -mm. You are being distracted. Let me turn and read Leviticus. How they made the tabernacle. Except the Holy Ghost takes you there. Stay and study the area where you are trusting to find light in. Okay, scene one. Peter was in the prison, bound hand and feet. Is that true? The doors were closed. What happened? The next thing the Bible tells you is that prayer was made by the church unto God for him. So I write. I'm combining my ingredients now. At least I want to know what ingredients are there first. So number one, I see prayer. Are we together? I now write it down. Number two. An angel came. So I see the angelic ministry. I'm writing down. Are you seeing it now? An angel came for Jesus. Rolled away the stone. An angel came. So I know that for opening of any door, there is the role of angels there. I expect it to be part of it. I'm showing you how to make the word of God work. There is a part of the equation of open doors that men cannot be involved in. It takes the ministry of angels. So I know. What is the project? To scatter that door that is open. But how do you, how do you engage it? I've, I've written prayer now. Is that true? I've written the angelic ministry. And when they came, the Bible says when they tapped Peter, Peter woke up. So I see that discernment is also part of it. You see that now? Because he had to wake up. If he was asleep, he would not know that his salvation had come. 
And the Bible says, as they were parting Peter through the doors, he thought he was in a vision. So you need discernment. Because the person God will use to open the door for you may come in a form that you may not appreciate. So you need discernment. Now, I'm writing all of these things. By the time I find it now, Lord, open my eyes. In my situation now, how do I combine it? You are not Paul. You are not Peter. So now you are using the same ingredients, but you want to make something out of it now that becomes applicable for you. Ah! This is where the Holy Ghost comes. You are brooding over every darkness. You are causing lights to shine from darkness. Holy Ghost is brooding over every darkness. You are causing The assignment of the Holy Spirit was to make what happened in the Bible happen in your life. And he needs to now customize those ingredients. Because there are things you write there that may not necessarily be applicable. And whilst you are praying, how does this door open? And the Holy Ghost can tell you, begin to declare the ministry of angels. You may not know what you are doing. In the name of Jesus, are they not ministering spirits sent to minister today that be the heirs of salvation? You are speaking the word. As you are speaking, you are releasing their ministry. Now, you may not know. And then you are now praying. And the Holy Ghost will tell you everything men will always play a role. It was Jesus told men roll away the stone before he asked Lazarus to come out. So those who roll stones, angels can roll stones. Men can also roll stones. Are we together now? They can roll it spiritually while men roll it physically. And so you can pray and God will tell you, send this person a text and just use honor. This is the man appointed by God to roll away that stone. Ordinarily that person will not listen to you. But because what came to you is Rema from God. Just before you call or you text, the Holy Ghost begins to speak to him. Living is not profitable until you empower people. The Holy Ghost is preparing. You see how he's acting it. He's preparing him to honor that text. He begins to put a thought of impacting lives. You should not. You are too wealthy to just remain at this level. And then suddenly your text comes. And honor is the key for access. Honor is a triumphant usher. It can lead you with dignity into the heart of any man and any system. Listen. And whilst you are sitting... Yes, who is this? Oh, I'm this and that. Oh, have you got a job yet? Tomorrow, come to my office first thing in the morning. And then the moment you are done with that conversation, just when you want to go to bed, God says, no, no, no. In the realm of the spirit, Satan can hinder men. You need to engage right now. And in this one, you are not just going to pray. You've prayed in tongues already. Get worship song and let it be with a dance that you seal this. I'm showing you how it works for people. So you are now dancing and rejoicing and celebrating. I will exalt you. You have lifted me above my enemies. And while you are doing that, there are angels fortifying. The Bible said the angel rolled the stone and sat on it. Let me see who will roll it back. Listen. By the next day, you have sent favor ahead of you and the man sees you and you step into prepared blessings and the door suddenly opens and when people come to meet you and say my god we can't believe this how how did this blessing come to your life and you tell them it's god oh it's, yes it's god oh but there are dynamics to it in the beginning god the word The challenge with many of us is we do not know how to engage the word for victory. So what we do is we just know somewhere in scripture there is a verse for prosperity. 
Somewhere in scripture, there is a verse for authority over demons. Somewhere in scripture, there is a verse for this and that. But the dynamics of it, we do not know. I want your life to so command results. So command results. To a degree that you will bring glory to the name of the Lord. Not just for the marketing of flesh. My brothers and sisters, please listen to me. I know what I'm saying. I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables. You listen to what I'm teaching you by God and by grace. Your life will excel in a way that will make you afraid. You want the anointing in your life. And you just blindly go, I think you are anointed. Pray for me. No. No. The anointing does not start with laying on of hands. The anointing starts from scripture. Go and search the scripture. There were people who started with zero anointing. And by the end of their life and their experience, they were marvelously anointed. Start searching. Be like a spiritual archaeologist. Journey with the Holy Ghost. How did he start? I have found David my servant. And with my holy oil I have anointed him. Aha! You have found it. So once upon a time David was not anointed. What did David do? Holy Ghost opened my eyes. And here's what you, God will show you. I have found David. But it took a long time to find my servant. Until David became my servant, oil did not come on his head. The God will open your eyes. I have found David, but I could not anoint David. The anointing is for my servants. So I took David from being just David until he became my servant. The journey of the cave of Adullam, the journey of breaking and making. That's what turns David into my servant. And when he became my servant, he was now qualified for that holy oil. Ah, Lord, what is the secret of being marvelously lifted by you? And you begin to search in prayer. And he leads you, my son, give me your heart. Give me your heart. Give me your heart. Lord, but I've been giving you my money. Nonsense. Give me your heart. Give me your heart. What is in your heart? Your reputation. What is in your heart? The entirety of your self-worth. What is in your heart? Your ambition. What is in your heart? Your sense of honor. Give it to me. It's not saying remove something from your chest and give me. Give me everything. And you begin that journey with him. Lord, I do not have the power to take Isaac. But I give you permission to take Isaac. And God says, that's what I want. Let's begin that journey. And at the end of it, it will look like your life is a miserable life. Until God turns with you and says, because you have done this to me, I swear and I vow in my name that in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. You see that? At that point... You don't just walk with God by emotions again. Your sacrifice has become a covenant. This one is more than just power. This is covenant. Psalm 50 and verse 5. Gather unto me my saints. They that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. At that point, God will swear a vow on your life. And say there is no meeting you will go to. That I will not be there to defend you. That one is God. It's is not Old Testament, New Testament. This is between you and God. By reason of your sacrifice, He will swear a vow with you. And until you get to that realm, you cannot do much for the kingdom. Many people wonder why sometimes all of these marvelous things that God does happen, doesn't matter where, doesn't matter who. It's not because I'm so much of anything important. It is because behind this you see is blood dripping. Blood that came from death. Blood that came from sacrifice. Once God has sworn upon you, it remains so until you see his face. It's a difficult thing to get God to swear a blessing over your life. But if God does swear a blessing, 
This is what our fathers taught us. This is what God did for people like Oral Roberts. This is what God did for the generals. He swore a blessing. He gave, he gave William Branham a covenant that there is an angel that will walk with you. And William Branham will stand on a crusade ground with many people there and say, God told me that everywhere I stand, his angel will come. And he will remain there until the angel appears. He will say, the angel has come. And all of a sudden, spectacular manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit. This word is more than enough to bring everything to you that your life desires. Any other formula given to you outside this word, I give you a guarantee in advance, is a waste of time. Don't sojourn for many years only to return back to where you left. The word of God. Let me show you something that will bless you. We're going to pray. John chapter 1 verse 3 Please read with me everybody One, two, read Stop All things All things Prosperity made by him Longevity made by him Influence made by him spiritual fire and fervency made by him relevance made by him all things were made by him and without him without means outside of his participation was not anything made let me tell you what the devil is deceiving our generation into doing listen my dear people Here's what the devil deceives us into doing. This church thing is a waste of time. Just leave this thing and use your common sense and face your future. All things were made by him and outside of him was not anything made. Don't wait until you are 50, you are 60 to suddenly find out you are wrong. Learn now. If my destiny will ever be made, it has to be in partnership with the word of God. There are arrows that fly by day. There are noisome pestilences. We live in times where people have been lashed economically. And they need the Lord to arise for them in ways and dimensions that not many of them know how to go about. Listen to me. My brothers and my sisters, heaven and earth will pass away. But this word you see abides forever. This is what our fathers taught us. Many of them lived, they ran this race with scripture. They were in the bush and all they had was a scripture. And from that scripture, Smith Wigglesworth found here in this scripture... Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he also do, and greater works. And that man who fixed his shoes, that was all he was doing. He was a cobbler. But he found this scripture, and it turned a shoemaker into an apostle of faith. I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, in every nation, whoever calls upon him or whoever serves him is accepted by him. That means it is not happening because you are in Nigeria or not in Nigeria. No. The Lord is my shepherd. 
if the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why? Because he can make me lie down in green pastures. He can lead me beside the still waters. He can even restore me. He can guide me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Then it says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, my comfort is that you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, anointing my head with oil. Listen, if your word study life has died, I want you to know for sure, according to the authority of scripture, that your life stopped moving forward the day you close your Bible. I assure you on that. You may have a semblance of advancement. Weep not, for the lion of the tribe of Judah is worthy to open there is a relationship between tears and closing the book. When you close the book, your tears begin. The only way to weep not is when the book is opened. For the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has prevailed. He is worthy, qualified to open the book and unlock the seven seals thereof. Hear me. This ministry you see, even though God has granted me grace for unusual and uncommon encounters, I have never placed my faith on supernatural encounters. Supernatural encounters did not create the world. It was the world. It doesn't matter if I go to heaven 12 times, my faith will not be in heaven. Heaven is a place. The world is God. Man shall not live. By bread alone. Ah. You are here right now as you are looking at me. You are saying, Apostle, you don't know my life and you don't know my situation. I don't have a helper in my destiny. Maybe my dad is late. Maybe my mom is late. There is nobody to help me. As I am now, I don't even know how I will rise. Find comfort, my dear ones. The Bible is full of people who sojourned this earth. Unassisted by men. But when they found the word of God. It transformed everything about their life. Spiritually, there are many of us who believe that the call of God upon our lives will require certain superior levels of the anointing. But you are not going to get into that just wishing, I know one day the anointing will fall upon me. No. You have to engage the word. In the beginning, the word, not anointing, in the beginning, the word, not prayer. Prayer is a derivative of the word. Anointing is a derivative of the word. Signs and wonders are derivatives of the word. Return back to the place of the word. Place value on the word of God. Place your life upon it. And you know that you place your life on something secured. Every destiny helper that is scattered around your life and is needed for your life and your destiny it is the word of god that brings them it is the magnet that will bring them and can i tell you don't ever say i am in a i am in zaria it's not true god can pick them from anywhere you believe what i am telling you anywhere go and lose the coat and bring it and if any man asks you tell him the master has need of it We are made by the word. We live in a world where people say, I am self-made. There is nothing like self-made in the kingdom. You are demon-made and ritual-made and charm-made and yoke-made and curse-made or you are word-made. All things were made by him and without him, was not anything made listen to me the future version of you is the word of god that will make it it's not time that will make the future version of you it is the word the degree to which you believe the word great fathers like papa copeland they would tell people to carry their bible and jokingly this is my bible 
it is God's word to me. I believe in what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. And so on and so forth. And it sounded childish. And many matured people have not produced one tenth results because they are too matured for the simplicity of the word. Oh, may we ever tremble at his word. May his word remain ever fresh. May you not treat the word of God like you treat familiar people. That every time you open the Bible, you don't just, Oh, John, I know this one. I can't even recite it. Till today, till tomorrow, till forever. Every time I'm about to open the word of God, there is excitement in my spirit. Because I know my eyes are about to see. And from what I see, others will see too. And so I am happy not just for me. I am happy for the sight of others too. Genesis 13. We're going to pray. Genesis 13 from verse 14. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Oh, there's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. I wish I had the liberty. To begin to tell you the testimonies and the things that God continues to do in this ministry. It's just that because of the maturity levels of people and because of the times that we live in, sometimes it's just safe to just give glory to God and say God is doing great things. But my brothers and sisters, these are the things that will cause the ears of men to say, what is this? The Bible says, no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it come into the heart of man what god has in store for them that love him but the holy spirit is able to reveal it to us you see watch this matthew 13 i mean genesis 13 and the lord said to abraham after that lot had separated from him lift up now your eyes what was the first thing he lifted? Not his feet, his eyes. And look from the place where you are, not the place you want to be. From the place where you are, lift up your eyes. From that place of poverty, from that place of spiritual bankruptcy, from that place of, of irrelevance, if I will use that expression, lift up your eyes. And he says... Where thou art, look from the place where thou art, northward, southward, eastward, westward. Next verse. For all the land which thou seest, not the land which is available, all the land which thou seest, to thee I will give it unto thy seed. Anything you see will outlive you. Your seed must benefit from it. It says, for as long as you can see it, I will give you in a way that your seed will also have it forever. Lift up your eyes. See. Verse 16. We are reading to 17. I will make your seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. 17. Hallelujah. Arise. Now that you have seen, walk through the land. You don't start by moving. You start by seeing. Walk through the land in the length of it and the breadth of it. For I will give it unto you. Listen, the problem is many people start moving and acting without seeing. The assignment, listen to me. The assignment of the spirit of faith is to make you see what God is saying. God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo, will say, you cannot doubt what you see. You can doubt what you hear. How many of you have picked up a call to answer a call and you suspect it's someone and you say, who is that? And he says, ah, your voice has changed. But not what you see. Can you say I'm wearing white? Am I wearing white? Because you can see. 
the same way you can see physically and it gives you confidence nobody will move to a closed door with his eyes open because you can see is that true so you know you need to open the door that's how it is spiritually and that's how it is by the word let this word become your new eyes that you see through the word if you can see it that god has said it and then you find out listen seeing it does not just mean finding it in the word seeing it also means find out the principles that commit god over that issue find out what you must do to commit god there is always something there is a participatory role that you have as far as committing god is concerned you want to be great you want to excel you want to rise beyond your status quo you want to rise beyond the limitation of your territory see and you go to deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you to do right that i will exalt you above the nations of the earth deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 and all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you when he was speaking it he was not just speaking it to israelites because we are that seed the seed of abraham galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 and if ye be christ then are ye abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise i believe that i've been called to a life of grace a life of glory i believe it doesn't matter the witches the wizards it does not matter the orchestrations of darkness that befall the day i know by the spirit of god that in partnership with the word and in partnership with the spirit that i will live a victorious life serving the purposes of the kingdom and excelling while i do so this is my conviction you make the word of god become your frame of reference are we together now and then you commit god by walking in keeping with the principles that make it happen many of us here i wish i had the time well let's see what happens tomorrow we still have a session tomorrow many of us want to rise you want to rise out of a life of mediocrity a life of poverty a life of failure my brothers and my sisters there is a way to do it if you think the way is business think again if you think the way is just buying and selling think again no it is not what you do it's primarily who you know then what you become by reason of that knowledge then what you do from the standpoint of that becoming are you seeing now everything starts with knowledge let's round up with this scripture for tonight daniel eleven thirty-two. 32 Daniel 11 32 Make it happen. it says the B part but the people that do know everybody say no one more time say no say knowledge that's the beginning the ultimate goal is exploits but here's how it starts knowledge then if they know they shall be strong so they will be knowledge becoming then doing equals to exploits knowledge of god and then his ways transformation by that encounter and then the wisdom that comes from that transformed version of you you now walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise it will be equal to a life of exploits. Everywhere that I go, everything that I do, I'll hear in sanana. Everywhere that I go, everything that I do, I'll hear in sanana. That becomes your life. Listen. You will be an overflowing bank of grace when you understand this. 
the effulgence of the beauty and the glory of God's grace upon your life. Let me tell you, you will be the first spectator of that sight. You, your own life. I know what I'm telling you. It is true. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, he went about doing good. You don't just do good. There is something that must be in place for you to do good. Healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. Listen to me. From this night's meeting, I want you as we we'll pray for a few minutes, make a decision that your life is not going to be the way you met it. Make up your mind. I'm tired of giving excuses about my life. I've been giving excuses it's because I'm in Zaria. It's because I'm this and that. Refuse. The word of God is an advantage. It is true. Everywhere that I go, everything that I do, I'll hear in Sanana. The wonder working power of the word. When the word finds expression in your heart and it turns you into a sign and a wonder spiritually you are a sign and a wonder financially every aspect of your life let me give us one scripture to end tonight this is my desire and this is my prayer i know that many of us as far as loving jesus and serving him is concerned i testify that many of us love him i give that credit to you i know by the spirit by the grace of god this is a house that loves jesus we love him in different degrees, but sincerely, I can stand boldly to tell the world that this is a house that loves Jesus so passionately. Our love for Jesus has been proven again and again. But in addition to your love for Jesus and your desire to make him known to the nations, God desires that you excel in your life. He wants you to rise to a point where your life becomes a testament of God's glory. And anything short of this truth, do not receive it. Whilst you serve Him, whilst you live for Him, whilst you exalt His name and declare His praise to the nations, He wants your life to experience the goodness, the glory, the power of God. Because that quality of your life is also a message. Genesis 24 one genesis 24 verse 1 genesis 24 verse 1 everyone please read and abraham was old hold on that means he lived long everybody say long life and well stricken in age and the lord had blessed joshua selman in all things and the Lord, see, it is what you see that is given, not what your neighbor sees. Not what your family sees. As far as your eyes can see, the possibilities that the word of God constructs for you becomes your inheritance. The portion you have seen is the portion you step into. Not the portion available, the portion you see. If all you see from the word is an excelling spiritual life, that's all you will get. If all you see in the word of God is a prosperous life and you don't see a spiritually vibrant life, you will get prosperity at the detriment of your spiritual work. If all you see in the word is divine health, that's all you will get. But if you see everything, everything that makes God God, spiritual fire, vibrancy in your life vibrancy in your finances and you say god this is what i've seen he says unto you because you have seen it this becomes your inheritance let us not allow our children suffer because we did not see well son of man what seest thou the root the shoot of an almond tree he says you have seen correctly as a result of what you have seen I will hasten my word 
to perform it. What word? The one you have seen. Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 10 to 12. The whole context is from verse 5 to 12. Jeremiah. Aside from your biological parents, aside from your spouses, for those who are married, believe me when I tell you, it will be very difficult for you to find a single human being that loves you more than me. But as much as I love you, even if I feed you, I can't swallow for you. I can't digest it for you. Is that true? Even for patients who doctors use another means to get food to them, when it gets to the body, your body must be alive to digest it. I pray for you all the time. And I want you to know that every time I come and bring the word of God like I've always done, it's not because I'm looking for anything for myself. No. It is a passion to see that everyone can rise. And that for as long as I am alive, I will not sit down and watch the devil destroy anybody's life in mediocrity and make you fail and live a defeated life. Seated in this place are people who represent the next generation of what God is doing. The same way the baton was passed to us. And now we are running as faithful as he granted us, as he's granted us grace. It is my assignment and my responsibility under God to see to it that there is continuity to what God is doing. My beloved people, hear me. You are greater than what you see that you are. The problem is your sight. Every time you look at your room and you look at rain dripping, every time you look at your shoe, we have been taught mundane parameters Look at what is happening to your spirit, man. Look at what is happening to your mind. That is the real wealth. What is happening around you is temporal. It will change. The word of God has such a force. It can superimpose upon it. Provided you are engaging it. Provided you are engaging it. Sitting down and merely hoping that life will evolve itself into victory for you is flattery. It will not happen that way. You will be intentional. Three prayer points tonight very quickly. Our time is up. Prayer point number one. Restore my fire for the word. Restore my fire for the word. Restore my fire for the word. Restore my appetite for the word. Restore my fire for the word. Someone is praying. Restore my appetite for the word. Don't be distracted. The overflows. Pray. Following online. Pray. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Please pray. Pray. Shela kaparagato sedegele bakata. Prandas kata bakata pratekete balakata. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word abides forever. No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming out to me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Are you praying for your destiny? No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming up to me. 
A restoration of fire for the world beyond reading one verse per day, beyond just morning devotion. Get us in the Hallelujah. Let's look up. Prayer point number two. You are going to declare the word of God that you know over every aspect of your life. Don't declare your problem. Don't declare what is wrong. Every scripture, no matter how little or much you know, you are going to open your mouth, place the word of God upon your destiny and leave it there. And watch the reaction that happens. Place the word of God. Is someone declaring? Gentiles come to my light. Came to the brightness of my rising. In the name of Jesus, I arise. I shine. My light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am an eternal excellency. A joy of many generations. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm planted in the house of God. I flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, I am fat and flourishing. My gates are continually open, never closed, to receive the forces of the Gentiles. My path is as a shining light that shines ever brighter, even unto the perfect day. A thousand four by my side, ten thousand by my right side, none shall harm me. With my eyes will I see, and behold, the reward of the wicked. The Lord stands by me like a mighty, terrible warrior. Pray, declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. I rise up by revelation. The glory that excels working in my life. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I go from strength to strength, from grace to grace, from power to power. Strength to strength, strength to strength, power to power. I am blessed because I fear the Lord. My seed remains mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright in my life are blessed. Wealth and riches remain in my house. My righteousness endures forever. The life of God shines upon my head, shines upon my feet. Don't be tired. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Declare long life. I declare longevity. I declare the fullness of my days. I serve the Lord. And He blesses my bread and my water. He takes sickness away from me. The fullness of my days. I fulfill. Follow me. Goodness and mercy. Follow me. Goodness and mercy. Follow me. No people passion against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me falls for my sake. Are you declaring? The Lord gives me a wisdom and a mouthpiece. That no one can get saved nor resist the wisdom of God is at work in my life. Therefore, access to the hearts of kings, access to the hearts of nobles. Shall 
Don't be tired. One or two more minutes. Be glad. Speak over your finances. In the name of Jesus, I operate by the wisdom of the Spirit. I know what to do. The Lord is my shepherd. I refuse to be in one. He shall keep his angels charge over me. They bear me up on their wings. Lest I dash my foot against the stone. The Lord will deliver me from six things. In the name of Jesus, in time I will die. He will deliver me from the spotted things of man. Because I have a covenant with the stone. I am exalted by the Spirit of God. The power of God is at work in me. Setting signs and wonders through my life. Jesus is glorified. In my life, Jesus is glorified. In and through this ministry, man glorify God in me. Man glorify God in me. My life so shines before man that they see the good works of the Lord in and through my life and glorify the Father in heaven. Everything works in my hands. Nothing dies in my hands. I am a life-giving spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Declare from glory to glory, from praise to praise, my prayer life on fire, my word body life on fire. I continue to transmit, to transmit, to contend for transformation by the Spirit of God, superior belief systems, superior versions of myself, in the name of the Jesus, the gates of cities, the gates of nations, the gates of territories are open for me, for the sake of His name, upon my life. Don't be tired. You are the redeemed of the Lord. Says so. You are the blessed of the Lord. Says so. You are the anointed of the Lord. Says so. You are the lifted of the Lord. Says so. You are the favored of the Lord. Says so. Declare so. Proclaim so. Decree so. Go ahead and pray. The anointing of the spirit, the grace of God, is mightily upon my life. Walking wonders, walking wonders. The grace of God is at work in my life. In the name of Jesus, I am an abundant of the power of God, in the wisdom of God, the grace of God. In the name of Jesus, supernatural influence from glory to glory by the Spirit of God. Ever loving Jesus, ever serving Jesus, ever living for Jesus. I have authority and dominion over principalities, over power. I have authority, I have dominion over causes, over love. In the name of Jesus, no enchantment, no divination, no pronouncement, no declaration, no enchantment with the heavens that walk over my life. I am immune by the power of the word of God. Of the time, 
will meet her from my dwelling. The evil of the time will come from my habitation. I do not live by the sword. I will never die by the sword. I live by the word of God. That even an abided forever. My body is free from sickness and infirmity. Kill and diseases. You are far from me. A body has God prepared for my spirit. I live in hell. I enjoy longevity. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you as long as, as long as I am free. Listen, it was written so that it would not be changed. It was written so that it would not be changed. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written. Many things have been written and I believe them. I want you to leave this place this night not just saying I came to church I want you to leave this place this night with confident assurance it has been written concerning me and I engage it with understanding until my life becomes an effulgence of victory in the name of Jesus Christ give me one minute to make an altar call it always starts with Jesus. There are people listening to me here. You are in this auditorium. Probably you have visitors coming for the first time. There are others who have been here. And you are saying, Apostle, while the word of God was coming forth, the Lord began to speak to me about the need for a meaningful relationship with Jesus. More than religion, more than church. And there are others who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but the way my life is, I need to start afresh. Wherever you are, aside from Overflow 3, that I may just request that you move to the front of your screen. If you are here or you are outside, it's my joy to lead you to Jesus. Wherever you are, please leave your seat quickly and come and stand before me. Receive that boldness. Don't be ashamed. Are there people coming? Let's celebrate them. I believe there has to be someone that God is speaking to. God bless you. God bless you. Celebrate them as they come. Those coming from outside, clear the way for them. God bless you. Don't sit back when the Holy Ghost is saying, come and join them. I believe that there are people that the Lord is speaking to. Hallelujah. Let's give one more minute. Are there people who God is calling? If you are coming from outside, please quickly, quickly make your way. Overflow 3, move to your projector stand outside. And then, for those who are following online, you can participate in this prayer. Let's celebrate them as they come. God bless you. God bless you. 
Hallelujah. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much, my dear ones, for coming. I want to lead you to make this prayer. It is the greatest prayer you will ever make in your life. If there's anyone joining them, please come quickly and stand. God bless you. Lift your right hand, every one of you, and say this after me. Say it loud and clear with every sense of conviction from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I declare that I believe in you. You are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised up for my justification. This night, I make Jesus my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that I am a recipient of eternal life. I also declare that I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I reign in life. From today, I move forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these ones and as many who are connecting, following from around the world and those who are in the overflows, they have come to declare your lordship over their lives by the authority of scripture i declare their sins forgiven and in the name of jesus i declare that the lord gives you a new beginning from tonight you are recipients of god's life god's grace god's power i decree and declare in the name of jesus that from today you go forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken forever over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, welcome to the family of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Now, We believe you are mightily blessed. To connect with the ministry and get more from Apostle Joshua Selman, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Koinonia ENI to stream Koinonia Live. Go to mixella.com forward slash Koinonia hyphen radio and download the teachings on koinoniadownloads.org. For questions and inquiries, call 0814-721-4444 or 0907-777-7853. We love and celebrate you.